Hey everybody, it's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be doing a physical overview and a menu walkthrough of the Sony A7S III. So it seems to me that Sony has made it a point to give this highly anticipated camera a couple of distinguishing features. They switched up the menu system on the A7S III nearly entirely, and it's also got some new external features that set it apart from its Sony predecessors too, which I wanna get into. So let's dive into a physical overview of the Sony A7S III. Okay, externally, the first thing I'm going to mention is that the body on the a7S III is a bit beefier than other Sony camera bodies. This happens to give it a much deeper grip, and this is one of my favorite additions. Another awesome addition, in my opinion, is the flip-out articulating screen. This is a screen design that I think Sony is finally coming around to with their newer cameras this year, as we've seen it on the a7R IV and the A1 as well. We also have a nice large recording button up top here underneath the shutter button, and this is how the custom function buttons are laid out. The media door has a much larger latch, and it feels way better to lock than on other Sony cameras, like the a7 III, for example. Also, the doors for the inputs and outputs are hinged and don't just dangle. One major difference in the outputs themselves is this full-size HDMI, which is also very new for a Sony mirrorless camera. Okay, next, I'm going to be doing the menu walkthrough, and the main reason I'm doing this is because Sony gave the a7S III a basically completely different menu than any other Sony mirrorless camera. And basically the main difference is that they went with a vertical layout rather than a horizontal layout. And each section has a few tiers, so you just work from left to right. Also, as you can see here on the top right, the menu works on this numbered system for reference. So each menu item has a corresponding number. So starting from the top of the menu is the My Menu tab in gray, where you can customize your own menu. Next is the Shooting tab, and this will be where you're going to find a ton of settings, including codecs, resolutions and frame rates, media and file management, including formatting, shooting modes, shutter options, audio recording, and time code. On the next page down, you'll get image stabilization settings, zoom settings for use with servo zooms, and finally, this is where you get your overlay options with shooting display and marker display. Next tab is the exposure slash color. This is where you'll find all of your ISO settings, exposure compensation, metering modes, white balance, And in color slash tone is where you'll find the picture profile menu. And this is where you want to go if you want to set a picture profile to S-Log. And below that is zebra display. Next up is the focus tab, which is where you'll find all things focus related, either manual focus or autofocus, including focus mode, autofocus speed and sensitivity, focus area settings, face and eye detection, focus magnifying settings, and peaking. Next is the playback menu, and all of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory and kind of the same as other Sony mirrorless cameras. Next up is the network tab. This is where you're mainly going to find all connection-based things, either wired or wireless. This is where you'll find smartphone control, PC remote control, and file transfer settings. This is also where you'll find Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings and other network options. Okay, the final tab, Setup, and there's a bunch of important stuff here. You'll find location, date, and time settings here, and under that is Operation Customize, which is where you can go to assign custom keys. 
You can also customize your function menu here. There's also a whole section for setting different settings in photo and video mode. Next is your display settings, where it will bring you to a monitor or finder page. Then you can customize what the display button toggles through in either of those sources. Next in this section is record with shutter. After that is dial customize, where you'll find all of the controls for the front and rear dials of the camera. Next is touch operation, where you can turn it on fully or just in playback. And you can change the touch sensitivity and the touch function in video mode. Okay, in the finder slash monitor tab is where you'll find a bunch of settings for the viewfinder and monitor. And below that is display option, which is where you will want to be to find the gamma display assist for S-Log shooting. Next is the power saving options. And after that is the sound tab, which they mean like output sound. And here you can even select four channel monitoring if you want to. After that is your USB tab with a few basic settings there. And then there's the external output tab, which is where there is all of the HDMI settings, which are super bulked up compared to Sony cameras in the past. Finally, we have the setup tab, which is where you can control the video tally light, remote control, auto sensor cleaning, pixel mapping, and firmware version display. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for the physical overview and menu walkthrough of the Sony a7S III. And I got some more a7S III content in the weeks to come, including a low light performance video and one I'm really excited for, a 4K 120 FPS shootout between this and the EOS R5. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And with that being said, if you have any questions about the a7S III's menu or the a7S III in general, drop a comment in the comment section and we can start a discussion. Also, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned in for more of our weekly content. And we'll see you in the next one.